Hi, this is Karen Ramirez, and this is Lesson 6 in our series of um, How to Play Chords. I hope um, that you've been practicing and you've memorized the spelling of the chords, the seven basic chords, and how to play them. Um, so we're going to go on now to the minor and the diminished and the augmented chords. And by the time we're done in the next three lessons, you will know how to play 60 chords in all the inversions, and you will never need a chord chart again. After that, we'll talk about the numbered chords, the notes that you add to make C7, C6s, uh, C9, C major 7s. It's so simple. So today, you can see this, probably wondering why this Bisquick box is on my piano. I've taken a lot of um, criticism over the years from some, some of the uh, professional piano teachers in our town for teaching this method called Bisquick chords. And I've had them call me and say, what are you doing? Um, but it's fun and it's easy and when I finally figured it out years ago all of the confusion and all the mystery of the chords just disappeared. Um, I became more relaxed. I was able to figure out any chord without ever ever looking at those ridiculous chord charts that are in the back of the books. So let's get started and we'll talk about this box of Bisquick. All right, let's get started. Um, last week we ended up with these with this really confusing looking page, page 16 in my chord book um, about scales, the scale sheet, and what the harmonics that make up a scale: um, two and a half, two whole steps and a half, three whole steps and a half. And we explained that um, right at the bottom and how to use the the scale. But I used to teach chords. Uh, I mean, I've taught chords every way there is, but from a scale sheet, you have to memorize this, and it is really, really difficult, and it takes a long time. For children, it's not quite so bad, but for adults who want to just play quickly, this has never worked for me. Um, it's, it, you have to know about it. You have to understand the scale, and you also have to understand where chords come from. So today's lesson, we're going to start on page 17 of the book. Um, and the first thing I want you to know is this. The chords are made from the first, the third, and the fifth step of the scale. There's 15 scales. Basically, there's 12. Three of them are, are repeated. So F sharp and G flat are the same. C flat and B are the same and C sharp and D flat, that's it. <laughs> okay, so when you think of a scale, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps in a scale. The first is the first note of the scale, it's called the root. The second we skip, the third is the fifth step of this, the third step of the scale. And then you go one, two, three, four, five, and there's the chord. One, three, five. Now, because some scales have sharps and flats, some chords also have sharps and flats. So the D scale has a sharp in it, two sharps actually. So the first step is D, the third step is F sharp, and the fifth step is A. D, F sharp, A. Okay, and some have flats and etc. But what you need to understand now is once you learn those seven basic chords that we talked about last week, C, F, G, all white keys, C chord, F chord, G chord, all have white keys, D chord, A chord, and E chord. Actually, if you spell it A, D, and E, they are A, A, D, E. They need help. That's a sharp. By every other note, sharp the middle one. And then the last chord we're going to learn is B flat, and that's B flat and every other note. Now, once you know those, and those are all in the root position, root meaning the name of the chord is at the base of it, or the root. So chords are made from the first, the third, and the fifth step of a scale. All right? If you go back to our cheaty chord lesson way back, it's, it's easy if you, if you get confused. You just put your thumb on the name of the chord, go one, two, three, four half steps, 
one, two, three half steps and you'll get those three notes automatically, no matter what note you start on. Okay, now that's that's pretty simple when you when you really work at it and you've had now like five weeks to work on this and if you don't, if you haven't memorized those seven chords, at least the white ones, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B flat, then you probably want to take a pause right now and just go back and take the time to get that foundation before you move on because it's really really important and it'll make the rest of the sessions that we have together a lot easier. So way back when when I was learning chords out of a book and trying to learn the scales and I had learned arpeggios in piano lessons when I was a kid and I'm sure some of you have too. Um, when it came time to play the other chords, the minors, the diminished, the augmented, the sixth major sevenths, seventh and ninths and elevenths and thirteenths, and I would just panic and go, what? Until I had an epiphany one day, I was making pancakes. So, and I was using this box. And someone had sent me a recipe book called 100 Things to Make with Bisquick. So I was making pancakes and I was kind of looking at the back of the box. And the box says pancakes and chicken fingers and strawberry shortcakes and uh, waffles and biscuits and oven baked chicken. And the book had hundreds of things to make. Just don't make the pumpkin pie, impossible pumpkin pie because it tastes like a dish sponge. But um, it's amazing. Now when you look at what's in this box, it says it has flour, niacin, iron, partially hydrogenated soybean, uh, leavening, baking soda, salt, aluminum phosphate, and some things I can't pronounce, which you probably don't want to know. If you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't really eat it. But Bisquick is pretty much a mix. It has basic ingredients to make hundreds of other things. And it occurred to me that Oh my gosh, I can do that with a chord. I can add things to chords and just by a few simple additions to the recipe, I could literally change the chord um, without taking out the basic mix. Does that, I hope that makes sense to you. But now when you think about chords, I want you to think about this Bisquick box. That's why I'm going to hold it here for a minute because it totally changed my world. And most of the teachers that I know uh, just go, what are you doing? But um, I always, in, I was going to be a nurse. And in nursing school, I, that's how I learned the anatomy parts and physiology and all the chemistry e equations by coming up with little tricks. So this is my trick for learning chords. Okay? Now, the first thing we need to do is we talked about last week about the chord inversions. Once you learn those seven basic chords, you really need to also invert them. So here's a C chord, right? C, E, G. Take the note off the bottom and put it on the top. Now, if I invert it again, take the E off the bottom and put it on the top. Same chord, same ingredients, just a different position. Now, that would be like Taking this Bisquick box, and we're going to look at this pancake recipe, okay? It says two cups of Bisquick, one cup of milk, and two eggs. It doesn't say what order to put them in. I can put in, it says stir ingredients. So I could put the egg in first, the milk in second, and the pancakes in, mix in, and it still would come out pancakes. I could put the milk in first, the eggs in next, and the Bisquick in last, and mix it up, and it would still be a pancake. Same thing with the three basic ingredients of a chord. C-E-G is the Bisquick. C, that's why I've been really begging you to memorize the spelling of a chord. C-E-G is the Bisquick. If I turn it over, EGC is also a C chord and GCE is also a C chord. All right? 
Now, let me show you something really cool. Sometimes you can be playing a chord and you go, or someone will play a chord and you'll go, they'll go, what chord is that? Well, if you don't know, here's a little sneaky trick on how to figure it out. There it is. And I'll try to center it here so you can see. The name of the chord is always at the top of the biggest space. If there's only three notes, if there's more, it might be a little more confusing. But if you're playing a basic three note chord, the name of the chord is always at the top of the biggest space. So watch this. This is really, really cool. There's a chord. The little space on the top, big space on the bottom. At the top means to the right. So if I just look at this chord, I can tell you what it is without even spelling the notes. It's that note right there. If I name that note, it's a G chord. Let's look at this chord. Um, here's the biggest space. There's the note. The name of the chord is F. All right? And right now, it doesn't matter if it's major, minor, diminished. You're just naming the name of the chord. We'll figure out the rest later. All right. If there's a sharp there, I know it's one of the aid chords, A, D, E. So here's a little space, big space. The name of the chord is D. <coughs> so isn't that easy? And it's, it's, it's going to be really important for you to know that in a minute because when we start talking about minor and diminished and augmented chords, it's easy to play them if you're, all of your chords are in the root position. But if you're playing on a, a keyboard, an organ, or a digital piano that has rhythms, you're not going to be playing your chords here you're going to be playing your chords down lower and the rule is you should always play your chords in the octave of F's that surrounds a C. Okay? So you have that much of a range right there to play all of your chords. Now you can't do that if they're all in the root position because you're jumping all over. So a few weeks ago we talked about inverting those chords if you're a keyboard player to make it easier. And then when you're a piano player you can play position more because you have a damper pedal on the floor to kind of run the chords together. But it, it's always, you're really going to have to know how to invert them to be a better musician. Okay, so here's what we're going to do in this lesson and it's really, really important. You have to be able to recognize the first, the third, and the fifth step of a chord if it's inverted if it's turned over. So now that you know the little trick on how to find the name of the chord, watch, th that's always the easiest one to find because it says so in the book. C major, C minor, D major, D augmented. So it's the letter that you want to concentrate. The letter is the bisquick, okay? The rest of it is the ingredients in the bisquick. So, Let's say we're going to play a C chord, and this is the way I always play C chord. Pointer on C, up two, down three. That's the C chord in the second inversion. Second inversion means the C is in the middle. Okay, if you're in a race and there's three of you, and you finish second, you're in the middle. It's okay. So if the name of the chord is in the middle, it's the second inversion. If the name of the chord is on top, if you're in a race and you finish on top, you're first. So that's the first inversion. And then you have the root position where the name of the chord is at the root or the base. All right? Now, I'm going to play a chord like this. This is my normal C chord. It's within the F range right here. And I'm looking at this chord. And the thing that always confused me when I was learning is I couldn't find the third and the fifth fast enough. So. I, I, I studied and I looked and pretty soon, and I don't know if someone told me this along the way, I knew a lot of people that taught me a lot of tricks, which I have always appreciated. You look at the chord and you zero in on the name of the chord, the root. There's, there's my root, all right? So here's the rule. And, and it doesn't always apply, but in a three note chord, it will always apply. All right. If the chord is inverted, the fifth is to the left of the root. 
and I didn't put always, but I would say you could say always. So if the chord is inverted, if you look at it and it's all messed up and the name of the chord's not in the bottom and it's not every other note, you look at it and you zoom in on the root. That's at the top of the biggest space. The note to the left of it, or at the bottom of the biggest space, you could do it that way too, is the fifth. Okay? Root, fifth. Well, logic tells me that the remaining note, and I'll move it over here, the remaining note will be the third. And that's the one you flat to make a minor. We'll talk about that in the next class. So the remain, and that's the note you really are going to be aware of the most because that's the one that gets moved to make it a minor chord. And you can pretty much play the rest of your life with major and minor chords. If that's all you want to learn is the seven major and seven minor chords and figure out how to move them up to the black keys, you could play the piano, organ, keyboard the rest of your life and be totally happy. And some of you um, email me and write me on my Facebook page and tell me how awesome it is now because you don't want to be a professional musician. You just want to play some songs. And so you buy little books like this one. That, that That's all that's in the book is major and minor chords. And maybe there's a seven, but it's usually outside the box, which means you don't have to play the seventh. And you could be totally happy for the rest of your life. So I'm not going to, you know, try to preach to you to make you a, a, a professional musician. Most of the people that watch my videos are just wanting to play and have fun. So this is my goal with you. All right. So if I play this chord... I know from looking at it that it's a C because it, it's got it's it's not equally spaced. So there's C. This is the fifth, and this is the third. Okay. Now let's look at this chord. All right. Now I'm just I just want you to look at it for a minute and zoom in right now. Just take a minute, zoom in, and tell me which note is the top of the biggest space. Little space, big space. That's the name of the chord. It's G. If someone says, what inversion is it? And they were trying to trap you and see how much you know. You know that if you finish first in a race, that's a G chord in the first inversion. Now it's really important that you be able to say, this is the root. The note to the left of the name of the chord is the fifth. And the remaining note, and I used to say the note that's left over, but that confused people. So the, the note that's remaining is the third. And next lesson, I'll tell you what you're going to do with this third. Okay? All right. So let's take this chord. Okay, can you see with my hands? Little space, big space. What's the name of the chord? And even if you don't know what the keyboard name, what it is, you can just look at it and say it's that chord right there. Okay, it's a D. So, this is the first, this is the third, and this must be the fifth. I, excuse me, that was totally wrong. First, fifth, third. Okay? I didn't say my lessons were perfect because I'm human, so I just got my tongue tied. First, fifth, third. Okay? Alright, let's look at this one. Now take a minute and look at it. You will notice that they are equally spaced. So looking at it, there's no biggest space, so that means the name of the chord is always at the base or the root. Now that one's easy. First, third, fifth. Okay? All right, let's do one more. Little space, big space. Name of the chord is E. That's the first. B's the fifth, and there's the third. All right. So if you go back in the book and you learn those seven basic chords, how to spell them and how to play them. Okay, you, you spell the C chord, C, E, G, but most, and if you're a piano player, you can play it that way if you want, but I think you should play it G, C, E. Okay, first, fifth, third. Uh, and I kind of do it that way because 
it, it just sets my head. Top of the biggest space, bottom of the biggest space, note that's left over. So I used to go for one, three, five, but it, it, the, th the third was not always above the root. So it's, it's easier to think of it as one, five, three. All right? And here's F. One, now here's Y. Look, see, there's no third up there. One, five, three. D. One, five, three. One, three, five, equally spaced. B flat, one, three, five. G, one, three, five. So if you notice, three of the chords are in the root position and four of the chords are inverted. So I think you will find that if you go back to that page in my book, and I, I, I'm not really prepared to tell you which page that was, but you really need to learn page 13 the most important page in my book. It's called Memorize Review for Day 6. If you know how to, if you get this page, the rest of our sessions will be easy. This is how you play them. This is how you spell them. Play them inverted. Spell them in, in the root position. Okay? Now, in this week, uh, this page is not in my chord book, so we're going to put it up as a PDF. It comes from this book, every workshop I've ever done. If you already have this book in your collection, it's page eight in the uh, every workshop I've ever done book. Uh, and we'll do a series on this book in a few weeks because I'm really proud of it. There's some really cool tips in there on after you learn these chords. So I'm trying to do these sessions now in my home in order uh, because you won't even understand most of what's in this book until you get what's offered in this book with the DVDs, okay? So, this is a PDF. It tells you everything I just said, um, and it's all written out for you. So, it'll be included at the end of, um, the PDF will be included with this lesson, and you can download it um, on your computer, okay? So, that ends this session this week. I want you to just work on those basic seven Bisquick chords. And just laugh at yourself when you're thinking about um, making things out of Bisquick and how to relate it to chords. All right, so now you know how to make things from Bisquick. Um, when I first got married, I went online and I learned to make everything from Bisquick. You can make pies and chicken and pancakes and shortcake, and it's the same with chords. If you learn what's basically in the chord box, the seven chords, you can add eggs and milk and all kinds of things to it to make more professional sounding chords. But to start with, all you really need is that basic bisquick. So next week we'll talk about making the chords into minors and diminished and augmented and just carry on. But keep this in mind that you can't ever change what's in this box. It has flour and shortening and if you read the side you probably would never use it because it has a lot of stuff in it that I can't even pronounce. But the basic concept of Bisquick is you can't take the ingredients out but you can add to it. And that's what we're gonna, that's what we did today with the chords and we'll continue to do in the next two lessons.